Hello Year 3, I hope you're all well and having a nice day. Right, I'm going to read you the next part of the Iron Man. And the last part we've read, the space bat angel dragon had been demanding to be fed living things and the humans had tried to wipe it off the face of the earth with all the guns, all the bombs, all the tanks, all the army, all the air force, everything they had. And after all that, it lay there and it just smiled as if it had been tickled. So that didn't work. So now they have one week to come up with a plan before it wants to be fed. So what do we think is going to happen? Now, Hogarth has a plan and it involves the Iron Man. So let's listen and find out what his plan is. And it starts like this. Hogarth had faith in the Iron Man. He visited the Iron Man in his scrapyard and talked to him about this great monster that was threatening the earth. Please, he asked, please, can't you think of some way of getting rid of it? If you can't, then it's the end for all of us. The Iron Man chewed thoughtfully at his favourite titbit, a juicy, spicy old gas stove. He shook his head slowly. Please think of something, cried Hogarth. If this space bat angel dragon licks all life off the earth, That'll be the end of your scrap iron. There'll be no people left to make it. The Iron Man became still. He seemed to be thinking. Suddenly his headlamps blazed red, green, blue and white all at once. And he stood up. In a great grinding voice, he gave his commands. Hogarth danced for joy. The Iron Man had the most stupendous idea. The Iron Man would go out as the champion of the earth against this monster from space. And chapter five is called the Iron Man's Challenge. Let's see what he's going to do to beat the space bat angel dragon. There was no time to be wasted. The Iron Man allowed himself to be taken to pieces. Arms, legs, body, head, all separate. So each part could be flown out to Australia on a different airliner as an aeroplane. He was too big to be flown out in one piece. At the same time, a ship sailed from China, loaded with great iron girders, and another ship sailed from Japan, loaded with fuel oil. The Iron Man had ordered these. The girders and the oil and a team of engineers were unloaded on the beach of northern Australia, near the space about Angel Dragon's neck. Then the Iron Man's parts were landed at the same spot and the engineers fitted him together. He stood up on the beach and shouted his challenge. So what's he planning? Iron girders are like big long pieces of metal and he's got fuel oil and some engineers. Maybe he's going to build something. Sit up, he roared. Sit up and take notice, you great space lizard. The space bat angel dragon sat up slowly. He had never noticed the fussing of the boats and aeroplanes down there on the beach near his neck. Now he gazed in surprise at the Iron Man, who seemed very tiny to him, though his voice was big enough. The Iron Man spoke again. I challenge you, he shouted, to a test of strength. A test of strength? The space bat angel dragon couldn't believe his ears. A tiny little creature like the Iron Man challenging him to a test of strength. He simply laughed loud and long. Then he peered down again at the Iron Man while the echo of his laugh was still rolling around the earth. He peered down out of the sky at this odd little thing on the beach with the even tinier men scuttling around it. And if I can prove myself stronger than you are, then you must promise to become my slave cried the Iron Man. The dragon smiled. Aircraft flew around watching this amazing conversation between the space bat angel dragon and the Iron Man. Ships out at sea watched through telescopes. And if you don't accept my challenge, shouted the Iron Man, then you are a miserable, cowardly reptile, not fit to bother with. The space bat angel dragon was so astounded that he agreed. Why, he thought, when this silly little creature has finished his antics, I'll just lick him up. So the monster agreed 
and watched to see what the test of strength was to be. After all, if he wanted, he could flatten the Iron Man with one eyelash. The engineers had fastened all the girders together in the shape of a grid, a huge iron bed the size of a house. Under this, they had made a steel-lined pit. Now they poured fuel oil into the pit. The space bat angel dragon watched. Now they lit the fuel oil and the flames roared up fiercely through the bars of the grid. So what do we think the Iron Man's plan is? He's challenged the space bat angel dragon to a test of strength. But he's very small compared to the space bat angel dragon. And now this thing they've built, this big, huge iron bed the size of a house with a fire in it, is part of his plan. What do you think is going to happen? We will find out tomorrow. OK, so I'll put the next part up tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed that part. Good night. See you soon. Year three. Bye bye.